Previously, Aiden jumped off and slashed the giant beast, and it died. Nonetheless, Aiden was startled and according to him, it's not enough to make a difference, but still, it's pretty good at draining life energy. Then one soldier was shocked, and he was confused if that ruffian just used sword aura, and he said that maybe the troll master rumors are true. Underlord was teasing him and calling him troll master, but Aiden was annoyed, and he told him to shut up. Then Underlord told him that he's always especially harsh on him, but Aiden told him that whatever he says feels disgusting. All of a sudden, this soldier bowed his head and thanked Aiden for saving him, and at that moment, Aiden was startled. Then he glanced at him and told him that instead of thanking him, grab a weapon and defend the wall. Suddenly, Lo came and he asked Aiden if he was all right, but Aiden was just silent. Then he told Lo to look at this, and Lo was shocked upon seeing a lot of monsters at the gate. Lo said that it was a massive number of monsters. All of a sudden, Aiden laughed and said that from now on, these guys will be his daily snacks. Lo was shocked and confused at that moment. Then he looked at his swords and he was talking to it, and asked if the Beelzebub sword wanted to devour them. But Aiden was annoyed and he was curious about what he was even saying. Suddenly, the Underlord laughed at him and said that he guessed even the Dragon Slayer King couldn't help it. According to the Underlord, Beelzebub is the sword of gluttony. It draws out the gluttonous instincts of its wielder, and he told Aiden that he enjoyed listening to his true feelings. Aiden was irritated and said that he needed to be careful, but since he's there to awaken Beelzebub, he'd thankfully devour all this life energy. Nonetheless, Margrave called him and said that he'd return after some cleaning up. Then Aiden was startled, and he told him that he'd handle it, and he could have a rest. All of a sudden, Margrave flew away and Aiden was shocked while shouting no at that moment. While Margrave was flying above, the monsters were looking at him. But Margrave was confused about whether he should clean them up all at once since it's a hassle. These soldiers were shocked and the man on the left said that it was the Aura Blade. According to him, it is something only a sword master can use. Aiden was mad and stated no, at least leave me half of it. No, even a quarter will do. Please. At this point, Margrave was suddenly attacking all the monsters and they were now dead. Then he came back and he was laughing at that moment. He said that it's been a while since he'd used his strength properly and it feels great. Aiden was wiping his tears and he was confused about why he come there. However, Dasvolt thanked them both and he thanked Margrave and said that they repelled the monster without much damage. At this point, Aiden was speechless and the Underlord called him, but he asked him if he was there to mock him again. But he told Aiden that what he was talking about wasn't a monster wave. Aiden was confused and he told Underlord to be more specific. The Underlord repeated and said that the massive thing he spoke of wasn't the monster wave, and Aiden was shocked at that moment. Then he asked the Underlord if it was not the monster wave and if so, what? Suddenly, Aiden was shocked and puzzled when he saw a huge flame above, and he told everyone to get out there. At this point, the fireball was about to explode and suddenly it blew up into the fortress of Attila, and luckily the soldiers managed to dodge it. Then the man on the left was confused about what was going on all of a sudden. However, Aiden and Margrave were both shocked and according to Margrave it's a fire spell of this scale and it's a mage who targeting them. But Aiden gritted his teeth and he told him that it's not a mage. Then suddenly, the Underlord asked if he knew what creature that was. Aiden told him that it was a fire spell in the Pyrrhon Mountains, it was that creature from his past life. Because of that thing, he barely crawled back up from heaven in his previous life. He was curious about how could he forget that monster. But the Underlord was confused about Aiden and heaven, and he told Aiden not to be ridiculous, then Aiden just told him that he was just saying. Nonetheless, this man was startled upon seeing these monsters, and he was confused about why are they all together. According to this man, its orcs and trolls form ranks. Then he asked his companion how could the trolls of the wasteland and the orcs of the Pyrrhon Mountains join forces, and if weren't they always fighting amongst each other? At this point, Margrave told Aiden that he'd be right back, but Aiden told him that it was too much for him to handle it alone. Margrave was suddenly shocked and confused about it, and Aiden told him to just look at the very back of the horde. Then they saw the boss monster holding a weapon at that moment. Margrave was shocked, and he asked Aiden what is that. According to Aiden, it's a monster with the magic power and strength comparable to a sword master, a high troll. Nonetheless, Margrave told Aiden and Dasvolt Tymon to evacuate the people immediately, even if he can buy them some time. Then Aiden told him that there was still a way. But Margrave was confused, and he asked Aiden how can he handle a creature that even he found challenging. 
Nonetheless, Aiden told Lo to lead the soldiers and hold those creatures off as best as he could, and Aiden immediately followed him, and he ran away. Then Margrave glanced at Aiden and asked, What are you plotting? A high troll alone is an equal match for a sword master. You know you can't handle that, right? But Aiden told him that he knew. The moment the high troll created a troll army, the difficulty of subjugating him tripled. Even if Margrave faces it alone, he won't last long. But there's one way for everyone to survive. Since they're short on time, he'd explain it briefly. At this point, orcs and trolls were about to attack them, and they were shocked. Then Dasfalt said that it was ridiculous. If Margrave leaves now, this place will be in ruins within 30 minutes. All of a sudden, there was another explosion that occurred behind them. Then Margrave was mad, and he asked Aiden if he realized how absurd his words were. Aiden told him that he did, but this was the only way out. They don't have time, and he was begging Margrave to trust him just this once. Then Margrave was speechless, and he remembered the time when Aiden told him that even if he sparred with him right now, he could at least scratch him. For the sake of their territory, he wants to help as well. Then suddenly, Margrave smiled and he told Aiden that as expected, he couldn't help but desire him, and he'd trust him this once. But he glanced at Aiden and told him that if he was wrong, he'd have to join his knight order. Aiden just sighed and in his mind, as expected of someone obsessed with bets, he told Margrave that he agreed. Then Margrave took a step and he flew away. Suddenly, the Underlord asked Aiden if is there only one high troll in this world, and how is he sure it was the same one he encountered in his previous life? But Aiden didn't answer him. Instead, he asked him if he knew how much orcs and trolls hate each other. Then Aiden said that yet the only one who could be subjugating orcs and command them is that creature. That too was thanks to using extremely vicious methods. All of a sudden, this troll clenched his fist and punched the soldiers, but luckily they managed to dodge. Then suddenly Lo was heading to them, and he immediately cut off the troll's head. Aiden just smiled, and in his mind, Lo had grown strong enough to slay trolls, and he guessed the herbs he gave him were effective. Then Aiden told him that it looked like that peculiar method worked. But according to Aiden, these trolls can't be killed with just that, and there's a reason why the trolls led by a high troll are called the Immortal Army. At this point, this troll extended his hand, and he managed the head of this troll, and it was floating with fire in it. Then suddenly, the head was back to its owner. According to Aiden, the High Troll can continuously revive trolls. Normally, they would need a sword master's or a blade or an archmage's spell to annihilate them, but he has another better method. All of a sudden, Aiden became weird again and said, My little baby, you must be very hungry since you missed your meal earlier, right? I'll give you plenty of trolls to eat. Then the Underlord said, Beelzebub, you must having a hard time. However, going back to Lo, he was in front of the orcs. He was mad and in his mind, after eating the young master's poison, he meant the medicinal herbs, he thought he'd become strong enough, and he couldn't believe it would end like this. He hasn't even repaid the young master yet. All of a sudden, the orcs were about to punch him, and Lo felt frightened at that moment. He started to young master, I'm sorry. But suddenly, Aiden appeared on the top of this troll, and he told Lo that it was a good job. Then he immediately stabbed the troll and screamed at that moment. Lo was startled, and he told Aiden to be careful. Even if he beheaded that thing, it wouldn't die. Nonetheless, Aiden told his Beelzebub that it was now mealtime. According to him, he might not have the power of a sword master or an archmage, but he has the gluttony authority of Beelzebub. Beelzebub's gluttony absorbs its target's existence, and once absorbed, the target is completely obliterated. At this point, this troll master was mad and shocked. Then Aiden just laughed and said that trolls are indeed delicious. Just one of them has a life force equivalent to dozens of wolves. But Aiden was suddenly startled upon seeing these orcs gone mad. Then Aiden wondered if orcs are tasty and good too, and he asked his Beelzebub sword if he wanted to taste them too. Aiden said that the fourth one was still not enough. Then he laughed and said that these trolls are really full inside, and he was confused if are they in season. And no matter how much he eats, he seems to want more. These goblins were shocked and puzzled at that moment. Then suddenly, the troll master raised his weapon and there were flames on it. The troll master attacked Aiden and luckily he managed to dodge. According to him, that guy looks really angry. Then the underlord told him that instead of running around like a coward, how about facing him properly? Aiden said that in his previous life, he would have done that. But right now, running away is the only option. If he even gets grazed by that fire magic, he'd be roasted. And he needs to hold out until the margrave arrives. 
All of a sudden, the troll raised his swords, and the Underlord informed him to look above and Aiden was just startled. Then suddenly, the troll attacked him but Aiden dodged it. Aiden was mad and said that these damn orcs were so annoying. But the Underlord asked him why he hadn't absorbed the orcs since earlier. Then he told Aiden that orcs may not be as good as trolls, but they still have considerable life force. Nonetheless, Aiden smirked and said that it was because he had a use for them. If their esteemed Margrave arrives on time, not killing the orcs will actually be more beneficial. Until then, he has to somehow that high troll is casting fire magic again. At this point, the troll master was still casting fire magic, but he was mad upon seeing Aiden fly above and far away. Aiden was mad and said that now it's trying to burn everything, friend or foe. Without the ring of swiftness, he'd be char-grilled by now. Nevertheless, Aiden was about to avoid the fire magic. But the Underlord asked him if he dodged in the air, how did he plan to avoid the next attack? At that moment, Aiden was shocked and confused, and he told the Underlord that he was right. Then Aiden shouted and said that he couldn't die in a place like this, and he was heading to attack while Margrave was chased by the orcs. Suddenly, there was an aura blade that occurred. Then Margrave came and he told Aiden that he held on well. Aiden was glad and he told Margrave that he really put out the fire at once. According to Aiden, as expected, a sword master is fast to travel that distance in such a short time. Looking beside him, it seems things went smoothly. This monster was shocked and he was confused about how is that guy there. And these other orcs were all startled. But Aiden just smiled and said the tide has turned, you disgusting troll. Nevertheless, he was shocked when the Underlord told him that he was falling. Aiden shouted, and he was confused at that moment. Then suddenly, this orc caught him and they landed on the ground safely. Then Aiden told him thank you. But these orcs were shocked after what they saw. These soldiers were surprised and the man on the left was confused about did the orc just save the young master. However, this orc said I'm sorry I couldn't protect you, my kin. Then he extends his hand and clenched his fist while saying that they will take revenge on the trolls who humiliated them. At this point, the trolls were in their front and they were all startled. Then these soldiers were confused and the man on the right asked what was going on. The orcs are suddenly attacking the trolls, but the man beside him asked him if weren't they on the same side and what on earth was happening. Then the Underlord told Aiden that it was just as he said it would happen. But Aiden Aiden said that he told him that's the reason the High Troll could control the orcs. They used the orcs' loyalty to their tribe and chief against them taking the chief and children as hostages to control the orcs. But Aiden was confused if those hostages were released. Then Aiden smirked and said that the enemy of his enemy was his friend, and that's why he didn't absorb the orcs recklessly. At this point, the troll held his weapon tightly, and he laughed and said that he had a plan. But suddenly, he was startled when he saw that he was being attacked by Margrave. He was shocked, and at the same time, he was confused about defending using fire magic. According to him, the troll is truly an entity on par with a sword master. Like Aiden said, if it were just him, he wouldn't have been able to win. But if there's another sword master, the situation changes. This troll was shocked and Magrave told him that that's enough of his screeching and just die quietly. Nevertheless, this troll said that he couldn't die so meaninglessly and he would never forgive humans who killed his parents. Suddenly, his eyes and nose have a fire spell. Then Margrave and this orc were both shocked at that moment Margrave was confused about what was happening suddenly and he said that the mana movement was strange. This troll gone mad and said that he'd explode all the mana in his body and take them all down with him. According to Margrave, even if he can't stop this, even the knights won't be able to withstand the flames. Then suddenly, he informed everyone to run and told them that it was going to explode. But all of a sudden, Aiden was heading to the troll and all of them were shocked. Margrave was telling Aiden to come back because he might die but Aiden just smiled and he was about to stab the troll. Then he laughed and said that the final blow was for him. In an instant, the explosion had occurred. Aiden stabbed the troll and he told his Beelzebub sword that it was time for the main dish. The troll was almost unconscious at that moment. Aiden continued stabbing the troll and Lo shouted at him and he was very worried. Then Margrave was confused about what on earth is happening and how does Aiden plan to handle such a massive mana explosion he was also curious if Aiden had a plan. However, Aiden was startled and stunned at that moment. According to him, the life force and mana are in much greater amounts than he expected, and he doesn't think it can absorb all of this. All of a sudden, the troll was screaming, 
and Aiden was shivering while saying that just a bit more. Then he stabbed the troll deeply, and he told the Underlord that now he needed his help. The Underlord suddenly appeared and asked Aiden how he could use him for something like this. Nonetheless, he told Aiden that if he promised not to drink holy potions for a week, he'd help him. Then Aiden was mad, and he agreed with what the Underlord said to him, and he told him to hurry. Aiden said that the sword had already absorbed enough of the bed's life force. Now, for the final condition to awaken the sword, infuse it with demonic energy to awaken the corrupted lord, who's sleeping in the sword. At this point, the Underlord touched the top of the Beelzebub sword and said awaken Lord of Gluttony, Beelzebub. Then suddenly, the Beelzebub was awakened, and he told the demonic energy that it's been a while. He stated that he was the will of the Lord of Gluttony, who sought to devour even the sky. Then he was asking who dares to awaken him. However, according to Aiden, as expected from an ancient ruler of the underworld, it was such an overwhelming presence. If he were an ordinary human, he'd be mentally dominated and turned into a puppet. But he has something that this guy fears the most. Then Underlord smiled and he told the Beelzebub that it's been a while, and he asked him if he was curious who woke him up. But the Beelzebub asked them why are they there. Then Underlord was mad and he told Beelzebub enough with the chit-chat and just hand over his authority. But Beelzebub said that as soon as he began consciousness, he couldn't believe to see him. Then the Underlord asked him if he was giving it or not, and Beelzebub said that he would. Aiden just smirked and in his mind, the Underworld took down all the corrupted lords and became the ruler of the Underworld, no wonder he's scared of him. Then he told the Underlord that he could be of use too. The Underlord madly looked at Aiden and told him to just keep his promise. Suddenly, Aiden was in his berserk mode and he told the Underlord that of course. Then he was mad and he gritted his teeth while saying devour it, Beelzebub. And Beelzebub was screaming and this troll was shocked at that moment. Then Aiden attacked him and he absorbed the troll's power and the troll had nothing to do. At this point, Aiden informed everyone that he couldn't see anything and they must be careful. Then Lo was holding tight at the pole, and he said that it was a huge gust of wind, and they needed to watch out. Aiden shouted at the troll and told him to become his strength, but this troll told him no. All of a sudden, the wind had stopped and the troll had disappeared. Then Margrave was shocked when the wind had stopped, and he was confused about where the high troll went. However, Lo was asking him if it was over, and if they were now safe. But at this point, Aiden was stunned, and he was confused if this was the true power of the Lord of Gluttony's authority, all that life force and mana. Suddenly, he was about to vomit and said that he ate it too much. Then the Underlord told him that it was his fault for trying to eat it all, and he knew that this would happen. As stated by the Underlord, no matter how strong the power is, if it is overused it becomes a poison. And he told Aiden that as unfortunate as it is, he'd have to let go of some. But Aiden said that absolutely not. He'd absorb it no matter what. Suddenly, Aiden was shocked upon seeing something below him, and he was confused about what is it. Then the Underlord told him that it was a phoenix and Aiden said that no wonder the High Troll was using free magic. Then Aiden immediately checked it, and he was curious if was it consumed by the High Troll and went into a comatose state. According to him, this species is as rare as a dragon, and he was confused about how it ended up there. Then he laughed and asked the Underlord that if he ate it, could he use fire magic too? But the Underlord was asking him if didn't he say he was about to vomit from eating too much. Then Aiden told him that it was true, but being able to use fire magic was a different story. Nonetheless, the Underlord told him that watching him makes him realize how reckless human greed can be, and Aiden just thanked him for the meal. All of a sudden, Margrave tapped his back and told him that in the end, he pulled it off. At this point, Aiden was about to vomit, and suddenly he already vomited, and Margrave was asking him if he was okay. Then Underlord told him that served him right for being too greedy. Suddenly, Margrave was shocked, and he asked Aiden if he wasn't a phoenix and why he was such a rare creature there. But Aiden was worried about his mana and life force, and as he stated he had to eat the phoenix too. At this point, the egg was cracked and Aiden was shocked. Then he cursed and suddenly, a phoenix appeared in his front. The Underlord told him that phoenix woke up after taking in the mana he vomited. However, the other soldiers were shocked and the man on the right said that it was the legendary phoenix. And the other man said that seeing a phoenix in person was a stroke of luck. But Aiden was mad and according to him, it's all because of that old man Margrave. He missed a once in a lifetime chance. Then he was annoyed when there was something landed in his head. Suddenly, someone said that the phoenix sat on the young master's head and Aiden was shocked at that moment. 
At the same time, Aiden was confused about why is it sitting on his head. But suddenly, Aiden was surrounded by flames, and these two were shocked. Aiden was confused does it know he tried to eat it, and now it was going to burn him alive. But Aiden was shocked and said that it was not hot at all, and he was curious about what is it. Then the Underlord told him that it was the Phoenix's blessing. It grants considerable resistance to most flames, since it was resurrected by absorbing the mana he expelled. It probably sees him as its savior. Nonetheless, Aiden smirked and said that it would come in handy against that guy. At this point, a phoenix feather was removed. All of a sudden, the phoenix flew away and Aiden was just looking at the feather that was about to drop in his hand. Then Margrave was shocked and he asked Aiden if he was all right since he was on fire just now. And Aiden just smiled and he replied, yes, I'm perfectly fine. Margrave told him that since meeting him, he'd experienced unbelievable things one after another. But Aiden just laughed and said that he was just as bewildered as he was since it was his first time experiencing this. While they were talking, there was an orc heading to them, and Aiden was looking at him. Then Aiden asked him if he was the orc tribe's chieftain and why he was still there. Aiden also asked him if he wanted to keep fighting. Then the orc said that an oath broken will pray price. The price is death, and he can take his head. Nevertheless, Aiden was confused, and he asked him what oath. However, long ago, the head of the Ramiz family and the orc chieftain fought a duel over this land. The orc chieftain lost the duel and swore to return to the mountains and never come down again. They then settled in the mountains and protected the land. Then suddenly, Aiden remembered Dasfalt saying that the orcs had settled in the middle of the mountain range. Maybe it's because of the orcs that the monsters don't come down to the territory. According to Aiden, that is why the orcs didn't come down and lived there. And orcs are a race that values oaths more than their own lives. Nonetheless, this orc said that his head would be enough and he was begging them to please forgive his clan. But Aiden just turned back and told him that he didn't particularly need his head to go back. Then this orc was mad and said that the ancestor's oath, he must pay the price for breaking it. All of a sudden, he screamed and raised his sword at that moment. Aiden was annoyed and said that it was so noisy. He was confused if should he just cut him down, but since they're protecting their territory, he will just be patient. Suddenly, Aiden smiled and he told the orc to pay for it with something else other than his head. And this orc was shocked at that moment. Meanwhile, the next day, Margrave told Aiden that he was not sure what he was looking at right now. Then Aiden asked him if that was a compliment, and he told him thank you. However, this man was panting and he was carrying sand, and he was curious why it is so heavy. Then he was following the orc and said that moving it like they're tossing pebbles. Nonetheless, Aiden and Margrave were looking at them and Margrave said that the orcs and humans working together. Then Aiden said that it would normally take months, but if the orcs help, it's possible to be done in a week. The orcs protect their chieftain's life, and they get free labor. And he asked Margrave if isn't it's a win-win situation. But Margrave just sighed and told Aiden that as expected, he could never figure him out. It's like talking to a dragon that has lived for hundreds of years. He thinks they should leave this matter to the slaughter tower. Now that even the monsters from the wasteland have appeared, it's beyond their control. Then Aiden said that he understood. He smiled and in his mind, he'd already gotten what he wanted so it's not his problem anymore. He came to awaken Beelzebub and even got the Phoenix's blessing. He was confused about now should he quietly go back and train some more. At this point, Aiden was riding a horse and people were saying thank you to him for saving their territory and long leave for their troll master. Then suddenly, a man on the right said that he heard that the high troll was defeated by the young master's sword, and the man on the left said that he heard their young master can even control phoenixes. But the man in the center said that not just phoenixes, they say he can also control orcs with just one finger. At that moment, Aiden had a flower crown in his head, and he was annoyed. He was curious where all this distortion came from, and he absolutely hated this kind of superficial welcoming ceremony. Then suddenly the Underlord was teasing him that the flower crown suits him well. But he told Aiden that they're not being superficial and he thinks they genuinely consider him a hero. Nevertheless, Aiden asked the Underlord what the big deal was about that, and Aiden said that it's not like it makes money. Then Underlord said that money talks again, and he told Aiden that he really is more suited to be a mercenary than a knight. Then Aiden said that a hero, and he was really planning to train quietly this time. Meanwhile, at Cassie's research lab, Aiden asked Cassie if is there no way to fix it. Then Cassie said sorry to him and told him that there was no way at the moment. It seems that her body's mana vein syndrome was more serious than he thought. 
and they need much more delicate medicine than when they treated the cute knight. However, Aiden asked her how much would that medicine cost, and he said that he could pay any amount. Then Cassie told him that money wasn't the issue, and they needed an alchemist skilled enough to create the highest grade elixir. But Aiden said that such an alchemist would probably only be found in the imperial court. Then Cassie smiled and said that still, she was still grateful to Aiden. If she had stayed there, he would have died after spending his life just searching for a cure. Then Aiden stood up and asked her if it was possible for them to just have the alchemist. But Cassie asked him if he hadn't heard such an alchemist. Then Aiden turned back and said that he knew someone. She didn't need to worry and just wait there. He'd bring them back soon. Meanwhile, according to Cassie, at first, there was doubt. Aiden suddenly came to her and offered to tell her how to cure Mana Vein Syndrome, even providing research funds. The second was acceptance. Knowing that her body wouldn't last long, she had no choice but to accept his offer. The third was despair. She was devastated by the fact that the method to cure her body was impossibly difficult. And now, the humans he'd met so far have warm words but cold actions. But that man, his words are cold, but his actions are warm. It's been a while since she felt such warmth. Nonetheless, Cassie sighed and told Aiden that it was interesting, and she'd be asking him to bring her a skilled alchemist, then her research is perfect, after all. Aiden was just looking at her. At this point, Aiden was walking in the hall and suddenly the Underlord told him that he was moving for someone else's sake. They say that a sudden change in a person can be fatal, so he needs to be careful. Then Aiden told him that he was just keeping a promise. Promised are very important to mercenaries, as he knows, and he was planning to visit that alchemist soon anyway. That person doesn't have much time left. Nonetheless, three days later, at Markland City, Aiden was there, and in his mind, the Empire's largest free trade city, Markland City. Well, it was a such lively city. But the Underlord was confused if was it a city, and what he meant. Then Aiden told him that a hot city where he could feel that everyone was working hard. The city itself disappeared due to a crazy dragon's attack, and he guesses he's the only one who feels strange about this situation. But Underlord asked him where is this skilled alchemist he mentioned, and Aiden told him that he'd find his way there, so he must be quiet. Meanwhile, at Markelin City Dutskirts, slum area, there were three men who were humiliating one man. This man clenched his fist and asked the guy why didn't he tell him to have the goods ready by today, and the man in his front was trembling in fear at that moment. Then he told the man that no matter how fast he worked, he could only make one a week at best. If he suddenly asks him to make twice as many of those top-grade elixirs, but all of a sudden, the man punched him and told him that it was not his problem, and called the guy Joseph, and he told him to be careful if he didn't bring it by tomorrow, his collateral might get hurt, as he knows. At that moment, Joseph was startled, and he was very nervous. But suddenly, Aiden shouted at him and said fraud extortion threats for those suffering from these. We offer solutions. And Aiden has repeatedly shouted it. Then this man was shocked at that moment, and he was confused about who that guy was. He told his companion, Karen, to go and take care of Aiden. Then Karen took a step and asked Aiden who he was and what he was doing hanging around there. He came closer to Aiden and Aiden just asked him if he didn't know who he was. And Charon told him to stop loitering and get lost, but Aiden didn't listen to him, and he waved his hand to Joseph. Then he asked him if he was suffering from fraud, extortion, or threats. Suddenly, this man was mad and he just gritted his teeth. Then he was about to punch Aiden and said, How dare you ignore me? Unfortunately, Aiden punched him and he was thrown at the wall. These three were all shocked at that moment. Then Aiden clenched his fist and said, move aside, I can't see the customer. All of a sudden, this man was mad and he was about to attack Aiden while saying, you dare mess with my people, I'll kill you. Fortunately, Aiden avoided his attack and managed to dodge it. Then Aiden just smiled while holding this man's pants. All of a sudden, Aiden undressed him and this man was shocked while Aiden was laughing upon seeing his boxer. Then Aiden asked him what's with these cute panties. But this man was mad and told him that he troll looking bastard. After hearing it, Aiden was mad and asked him what did he say. Suddenly, this man raised his sword and asked Aiden if he thought he could mess with their Cerberus, the top predator of Markland City, and get away with it. And he told him that he was now dead. Unfortunately, his sword was broken, and he looked so shocked at this moment. Then Aiden grabbed him, and this man was confused about who he was. Suddenly, Aiden's sword has a flame, and this fatty guy asks him how is he using sword aura. Aiden was mad, and he told him that his eyes were going to need some fixing. 
Comparing him with a troll, he's lucky that he's ending it this easily. Suddenly, Underlord told him that he was the first person he'd seen use Beelzebub like this. Nonetheless, this man was confused and asked what is a master like him doing in this slum. Then Aiden came closer to Joseph and asked him how about it and if he needed his help. Aiden told him that he offered his services at a reasonable price. But this man was just shocked and confused that a sword or a awakened swordsman was offering to help him, and at a such low price. According to him, Aiden was going to ask for something crazy later. He was confused if he could even trust Aiden, but there's no other way, and Joseph tells Aiden to help him. However, Joseph was a renowned Chinese alchemist in the underworld of Markelin City. His daughter was kidnapped by the Cerberus Guild, a criminal organization. At that moment, this man told him to give them an elixir pill once a week, and they'll protect him and his daughter. It's a good deal, considering that this is a very dangerous place. Joseph was crying, and he gritted his teeth. In his previous life, Joseph had brought those pills for years. But according to Aiden, when Joseph heard that his daughter was already dead, he asked him for revenge and soon joined her in death. But that was only in the previous life, this time, it's not too late. Joseph told Aiden that he would give him anything he wanted, and he was begging him to save his daughter. Then Aiden smirked and said, of course, mister. But he told Joseph that he must keep his word to give him anything he wanted. Suddenly, Underlord told Aiden that Beelzebub said that he was the first person with a stronger power of gluttony than him, and Aiden just smirked and said that this is a fair deal. However, while they were talking, this man was about to escape, but suddenly Aiden noticed him, and he was just startled. Then Aiden came closer to him and asked him if he thought he spared him for no reason. Aiden told him that he had some questions, but he doubted that he would answer them willingly, so they would start with a few hits. Then he told Aiden that no, and he'd answer right away, but Aiden was punching him anywhere. Meanwhile, at the Service Guild headquarters, the Guild leader's office, there was an old man laughing at that moment. This man was Ankle, the Cerberus Guild leader. He said that with two of Joseph's pills this time, they should make a nice profit. He was confused if should he just take one since they're so good for the body. But all of a sudden, someone entered and Ankle was shocked and asked who dared enter his room without knocking. Then he was shocked when he saw his member and asked him if he had brought Joseph's pills. But this man was speechless and Ankle asked him why is his face like that. Then suddenly, Aiden appeared and told him that he found him. Ankle was confused and asked him who he was and if did he do this to his guild member's face. He told Aiden that he didn't know what he wanted, but walking into a tiger's den like this, he was stupid. According to Ankle, he has an emergency alarm artifact that'll ring if he injects mana into it. At this point, he laughed and in his mind, his men would be there soon, so Aiden was done for. He immediately pressed his alarm, but he was shocked and curious why there wasn't anyone coming and if the artifact was broken. Then Aiden was heading to him and Ankle asked if is there anyone outside since there was an intruder there. But Aiden asked him if he was looking for his guild members. Then he told him that when he came in earlier, they were all a deep sleep. But he won't let him sleep so easily. And he asks Ankle where is Joseph's daughter. Then Ankle laughed and asked him if he was a mercenary hired by Joseph. He told Aiden not to get cocky after taking out a few grunts. Because he was the strongest in this guild. At that moment he clenched his fist and he was ready to attack Aiden. Unfortunately, Aiden punched him. Then he went to the prison and he opened it. He told Aiden that she was there. Aiden told him that he locked her in a place like this and that he was really shitty person. Then Ankle told him that the child was not an ordinary one. He opened the gate and all of a sudden, Joseph's daughter kicked him and he was thrown away. This lady was mad and said that she was going to kill him. According to Ankle, she's pretty good even though he left him beaten half to death. Aiden was startled, and suddenly the lady attacked him. The Underlord told Aiden that this lady was using an interesting power. Aiden was dodging her attack, and he asked Underlord what he meant. Then Underlord said that it's the power of a really annoying guy. But Aiden told him whatever. That's none of his business, and his goal is to save her and bring her back to Joseph. Then this child was screaming, and she told Aiden to bring her back to her dad, and she wanted to go to her dad. Suddenly, she was shocked when Aiden told her that they would go and see her dad. Aiden stopped her from her berserk mode and told him that her dad asked him to save her, and they would go home now. Then she grabbed Aiden's clothes and asked him if she could really go to her dad. Aiden smiled and said, of course, let's go. All of a sudden, the child hugged him tight and Aiden was just startled. This lady was sobbing and said that she was scared and she really missed her dad. 
Then Aiden told her that staying there alone must have been scary, but she's okay now. And the lady told him that they would now go and see her dad. However, Underlord was watching them, and he told Aiden that he didn't think he'd still have the capacity for empathy in that head of him. But Aiden asked him what he took him for, and what on earth did he think of him. Then Underlord told him that it just felt a bit different from who he was in his past life. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you wish to have another manual recap like this, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel so you will be updated for more content like this. Until next time.